big deer. Throw my binoculars up and sure enough, Moose is not only there, but he's actually fairly close and he's heading right towards us. Yeah, I will shoot him. Well, an unbelievable start to the season with so much good happening, so many cold fronts. We had big deer to hunt, but to have the perfect weather and this big buck come out, the griffin buck, was heart-wrenching to hit this deer high, something that was just hard to take. But while all that was going on, there was still another story to my season that hasn't been told yet. You know, you hear me talk a lot about a big buck is really not too much harder to kill than a regular, you know, 150 inch deer. You know, it's all about the age. It does now seem a little bit like the bigger the rock, the smarter they are. But, you know, we think we got this ranch covered and then way over here where we ain't even hunted ever, we find a really big deer. You know, I don't have a picture of him yet. That's what we're doing today. We're setting up a game winner feeder. Muddy bond and with a stealth cell camera on it. We'll see how this story unfolds. Well, after we got that muddy blind set up, uh, we just felt pretty good. We, we knew that we had a pretty good access, and knowing that Daniel had laid eyes on that deer, and then we had laid eyes on the drop time deer, and checked the cameras, and sure enough, there's the drop time deer in daylight. Well guys, I've never went after a drop time deer, not once in my life. And we've had him patterned now for three days. He's He's been daylight at least three days straight in the same area. Everything's looking really, really good. We got a perfect wind tonight. We got high pressure tonight. We got our dead zone, we got our clothes clean. I'm shooting the bow good, everything's perfect until I got him this morning at 7.40 something in the morning. He's standing there, broad daylight. And then the next picture is at 8.24 and somebody is driving around in there. I called the landowner, they don't know who it is. Trespasser, I guess, I don't know. I'm gonna be honest, I, I went to a real high percentage of thinking we'd kill him to, I don't have a clue. We decided to hunt anyway and just see if we could, we could see a long ways, just see if we could get him standing up somewhere so we could learn something. Nevertheless, we're here just to see and make sure and hopefully we can, we, you know, Lord willing, all glory to him because if we kill him, it'll all be because of him. That's the one he was with the other day.
You know, one thing I've learned over the years is playing this game with these big bucks is not easy. I think that's why we love it so much. You know, I backstrapped the deer, had trespassers ruin a hunt. You know, just not feeling great, but at the same time, you know, I know better. I just know that you keep going. It's kind of like the Bible teaches me that we just keep fighting that fight. And that's kind of how I do hunting. I mean, I make mistakes, but you just keep fighting that fight. We've decided to go back to the Bockelman farm, a uh, farm that we had some pretty good deer on, you know, just to mix it up, change the plans, and just see if we couldn't get on this big eight we called Walter. Guy's opening damn muzzleloader. That's why I got an orange hat on, but I'm bow hunting. I've come in here after a big eight I call Walter. And literally it's just gotten daylight and he's right here. He's 80 yards right now. He's coming right at us. kept moving forward that's what it was all about just one step at a time we decided to go back to a place we called the bone yard but only this time we were going to be up in the sand hills where we could see better and learn you know observation from the sand hills and hopefully we would lay our eyes on something big and then we'd be back in the game basically where i'm set up for tonight we are hunting a drop dine deer and i've never actually got to hunt a drop dine deer this deer, to be honest with you, is probably a four-year-old. But you know what? I threw the four-year-old out the books with a drop down ten inches long. We're after him. Um, if I get the chance, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna shoot him, and that's why I'm in here. I feel like we'll lay our eyes on him and hopefully get a bullet in him tonight. No fair amount, right here, CVA. As we sat there that night, uh, look up and I see a, a, a different buck. And right when I threw my vortex up, I knew this was a big mature shooter and it changed everything. There's a big buck chasing her. I think it's that buck I just told you about, either that or the big eight. I don't see him now. There he is. I'd probably shoot that deer. Big time, as he, that's, that's, that deer, I, don't you look like Lucky? That's that new deer. One I told you said look like Lucky. Yeah. Yeah, I will shoot him. quickly named this buck the moose buck just because he had a big paddle and just big mass and 
That it fit him perfect. Moose. Man, I'm just sitting here and I was looking and all of a sudden something got my eye. And uh, it was a doe running. I thought, well, maybe a coyote is after her. And I looked up and I didn't see no horns. And this deer just showed up two nights ago on our stealth cameras. And he's a stud. Probably, definitely in the 60s, probably mid 60s. Uh, mature buck. And he chased that doe. I seen her. She went sound. And he's, he's just trying to trail her. This cold weather hit. These bucks are all of a sudden just acting ruddy. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Muzzleloader in hand. Figured hey, it was just a little too far. And I figured really that he was going to come on down the hill and I might get a, a good shot at him. But nevertheless, he sees a doe, turns and runs off. I'd be surprised if we don't see him again. Yeah, he's got his dog is. October 31st, Halloween day. I know we have a 25 to 30 degree drop in temperature. Pressure is off the charts, 30.70 and rising. Cole and I decide to go back into this muddy blind, perfect south wind after moose. I'm feeling pretty good that we're definitely gonna lay our eyes on him, if not get a shot at him. sitting there looking over a boneyard and I look up and I catch a tine, throw my binoculars up and sure enough Moose is not only there but he's actually fairly close and he's heading right towards us. standing right here after the fact of deer season, standing in front of old boneyard where we put up a muddy blind and, and he comes to this grass and the grass was a little, I say grass, weeds. The grass or the weeds were more and, and his, he's coming through working his way this way. There's, you know, the deer had been crossing the highway every night and going to green. But I'll never forget him coming through this. 
literally he comes, guys, right through the boneyard. He comes right down through here. You know, I'm, I'm leaning out this side. We got three windows open. Uh, and he basically comes right down through here, right by the boneyard. The, the trick with him is just we found this area you know if we wouldn't have been in this area and we'd been you know this is probably about five miles from the river and sometimes it's hard to get away from those rivers it's just up in the hills but there was food across the highway and uh, and I think that was the key I think that's what we all got to keep up with is that food around us because sometimes it puts those big deer in places you wouldn't even think What a night. Moose is down. All the lows that we've been through. Cole has laid down some unbelievable footage. And to go in and execute, it doesn't get much better. That's a beast. That is a beast. I am, I am so proud at this moment. I mean, this is just a horse, but at the same time, I am so humbled. I'm so humbled that God gave me not only an animal like this to hunt, but he gave me like four of them right now in Oklahoma to hunt, big deer. And uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just speechless, really. Look at the blade on this, guys. Look at that right there. That is incredible. I mean, look at that. You know what, these bucks right here, I love to hunt them, but this isn't what defines me. God does that. He did give me a passion for this and to use it, and I hope one day that I've, I've done that. I've, I've used it for God's glory. And, and you know what? I give God all the glory tonight. Um, a great buck, Cole and I, got our adrenaline unbelievable, and we're going to cherish this moment, no doubt. Well, hey guys, welcome to this week's Walk by Faith. And today I want to open up the, the book of Psalms, chapter one, verse one and two. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. And to me, I just want to bring up one point is, I think as Christians, we need to be careful where we're at. We don't need to be in the wrong places to make somebody else stumble. We need to watch even what we watch on television or the movies or or listen to on the radio. Uh, and then verse two it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. And you know, if you're like me, you fall short that we are not meditating on this day and night. And the truth of the matter is, this is the only truth we have. This is the wisdom that will point us in the right direction and then help us point others in the right direction. Guys, I'm Jeff Denker, and remember, as we always say, shoot by sight, walk by faith.